charge of the action, Professor Joe Solis. All right, this fight is just about to be ready to go. Here we are. Both fighters touch in the center of the cage. Here we go. Oh, big oh. punches there from Byron. I mean, Byron he's got some out. power. He's Fast. looking to use it. I think it's oh, smart for Ray to try over to... under, gets the big throw. I mean, that's very impressive very early on here. Yeah, and, and for Ray, I mean, Byron was coming out hot and bothered, throwing some serious heat. Even if you're in a bottom side control position, it's still safer than being on your feet and getting cracked with big shots. And with, you know, all the evolutions in jiu-jitsu, that bottom side control isn't as dangerous as it used to be anymore with that buggy choke that yeah. people are going for these days. And it looks like he's throwing his leg up in an attempt where at least maybe he's familiar with it, but... Doesn't feel confident to go for it. Yeah, Ray caught a nice deep underhook and, and got used his it to get up, up. And he's keeping the underhook to put Byron's back on the cage. Byron round working hard round. to turn him. Round and round we go there. This is Byron's debut, and, and pacing is a is a strategy in MMA fights. And looks like Byron's slowing down just a bit. Maybe not. It's a good inside low kick from Ray there. And Byron swinging. Hands down. I'd really like to see him pick those up as he walks himself in, but... He'll, uh... Good jab from Ray. And then fight fans watching this fight. I mean, Byron's about as, as big and strong as you get for a light. Yes. Yes. Uh, very muscular. Ray pumping that jab. Trying to stay long with it. Trying to stay on the, all the way on the outside. Yeah, both guys using some good head movement. Ooh, Byron looks to try to catch that kick a little bit. Return. Big punches here from Byron, too. Yeah, a lot of power being thrown in everything that he throws. You touched on the cardio aspect of it. He's going to have to maintain a little bit unless he gets it done here in the first round. That might really show uh, to, to cost him later. Yeah, the second half of the round pacing is a lot more sustainable than the first half. Huge leg kick he throws, though. So there's not much of a bounce in a step. If he does get hit, he's not going to have anywhere to go. Walking in a little flat-footed. Ray still uh, popping that jab. He does shoot a double leg and ends up underneath here. Byron looking to lock up what looks to be maybe a, a Dars or Anaconda. He had an setup. Anaconda, but he switched off to a, to a cradle. And this is a, a, a hold, a grip that I think is underutilized in MMA. Byron chooses to drop to his back. I think that was a misplay. Yeah, maybe he had gone for the choke there, but didn't quite have what he needed. Looks as if he's uh, got his guard pass too. See, like the cradle is done from that that chin strap position, but instead of you know connecting your hands, you go around the leg, and you can't you can't make a hybrid decision on a guillotine and cradle. They're like polar opposites. Ray's able to wake his way to Byron's back here. He just got both hooks in, and uh, he's looking to isolate the neck. Can you think we could possibly see another rear naked choke here? I think Byron's Byron's got Ray's you know hand grab with 10 seconds left. It's fully seconds. figure four. It I looks, mean, this is deep. It looks like he's going for it. Byron may be able to survive this one out, but man. Oh, he, he gets the out elbow. of it. And good, we have end of the round. Good finish for Ray. I mean, that was Byron's round until about the 30 seconds left mark, and Ray finished in the most dominant it's, position you can hope for on the ground. I mean, probably the fifth or sixth round we've seen in, in that specific scenario where someone's got a full rear naked choke attempt locked in, and then the, the round ends. Yeah, I'd say, and you know, the biggest factor that I think is graded for and should be graded for is is damage and fight finishing potential. And, and I would say Byron probably won that round. If I, I would judge agree with you. Now, just from the aggression I would and the, and the big you. punches landed early more on. More power shots landed. I think the more um, significant strikes were landed by him. I think he did a little bit more of controlling the... the scrambles and things like that so yeah but ray i mean he did everything in his power to make that round you know a lot closer than a lot of other guys would have made he it. looked good on his feet pumping that long jab and, and trying to maintain his distance there low kicks he was chipping away see if he can keep that up here in the second round and then fight psychology is arguably the most important aspect when you can finish a, a round that started tough on someone's back you know that puts you in a good mind space going into round number two yeah they may start that next round already in a mental deficit oh he almost had me so let's see if we can turn it around here Ray Guevara coming out again early low kick starts to try to chip away inside low kick yeah I like how he's using these longer range kicks and these jabs before they really commit to anything super super you know big Byron able to back him up though and it I looks like Ray's just he's too comfortable giving up that distance ooh gets touched there Gets touched on his way in, throwing a switch knee. And that was by a jab. Now, granted, jabs can still drop it, but I think that was more of a, a knockdown than an actual drop. Than an actual drop, yes. 
But, I mean, that's why you got to set those up. Oh, he's, he's getting touched a little bit here. It looks as if he's trying to use head movement to get out, but Byron just staying sticky to him, throwing heavy shots. And, like, off balance or not, that jab stuck him firm and hard. I mean. He ran right into it, trying to throw that switch knee, jumping switch knee. And this is a good fight. Ray sticking to his jab, though, using his jab well. Most important punch you can throw out there. It establishes every other thing you want to throw behind it. So it's important to go out there and get comfortable throwing it early. Yeah, and then what we just saw, that was Byron's best punch of the fight, too. And he's thrown quite a bit, but, man, this jab's really doing more damage than anything else. I think yeah. he should stick with it. A couple more pop, pop, and he gets a, a right hand to land behind it. Does Ray. The front kick to the solar plexus. Ooh, left hook seems to have rocked Guevara there. Yeah, definitely made contact. He landed some good little left hooks under the arm. Ooh. He thought about throwing that knee on the way up. Thought twice. Got his back against the cage. Byron just chipping away at those low kicks. Ooh, another big uppercut. Seems to have stunned him. Hit, hit, hit right in the armpit, actually. Good right hand from Ramy. Ray's still in this fight. How it shows you the power of that punch. Stunned him into the armpit punch. Those low kicks are landing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those low kicks are landing, too. Ray throwing back, though, hanging in there, pumping the jab again. Ooh, I mean, he came up just a just shade short, short of that. Very clean right hand. Good jab again from both guys. Shoots for the double leg, does Guevara. He's got his hands together. This could be a good news for him. Gets the dump. He's got Byron on his butt, but can he climb up to be able to pass? He ends up getting stuck in the guard. But he is on top. We got just over 30 seconds in this second round. And then same thing, you know, say Ray does sit on top for the rest of the round, you know, that's another tough round to call. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's started so much one way and it's ending so much another way. Who, who can you give it to, you know? I mean, I'd say Ray does need to get busy doing some damage or maybe facilitate a guard pass. Need a, a few big punches here, yes. Because Byron did do some damage in that fight. I mean, he got the knockdown. Ten seconds here. He's going to have to maybe posture and try to get a few good... Heavy ground and pound punches landed, but we're going to get out of this second round, move into the third. Yeah, very good back and forth fight that we got here, Alex. This is uh, this is probably the closest one of the night, if I had to say. I mean, all the other ones haven't really gone too far. No, they sure haven't. <laughs> Had a lot of finishes, but I uh, I think this is pretty close. Yeah, Fight Fans at Home, if you guys want to watch how, uh, how successful Rene Kachok's going to be in MMA or learn how to do them, just watch tonight's fight card. There have been a lot of great examples. Yeah, we've had traditional rear naked choke grip locked up behind the head. We've had a couple palm-to-palm -palm finishes. We had one single arm choke that finally got the palm-to-palm -to, -palm to finish it. So there's been a few variations of it tonight. And as you're saying, there's so many other ways that you could finish that as well. But... The, uh, the Mataleon, the lion killer, it's, it's I think, probably the highest percentage choke in MMA, or oh, is, or is it's it? It's about 50% of submissions were naked chokes. I, I do my statistical I research. Say, on a previous card we did on a grappling card, you had shared that information with me, and that's where that was coming from, yep. Yeah, every, at least in, in the UFC, but I'm sure it's even more dominant here on, on, you know, not the highest, highest of levels. Insta shot there from Ray. Insta shot, I like that. And he's, he's got his hands Insane together. Insane sprawl. Now, Byron's deep on a guillotine, but it's arm in. His hands are now disconnected. He elected to not commit to the bottom position for the choke. And I think that was a very, very smart choice there by dig Byron. Dig that underhook out, yeah, and get the turn. Much better position for Byron that way. I mean, if he missed that guillotine, he's on his back. But instead, he reverses the position, and Looking he's in on a takedown of his own. Look, he get his hands together, maybe work a high crotch here, potentially switch it into a double if he gets the big sprawl. But he lifts and gets the dump for the beautiful high crotch. Yeah, and, then, and those dumps, those will just take the wind right out of your sails when you get landed oh, yeah. flat back on the mat. Oh, a little jumping knee. Hits it with a big right hand after, and that's going to be the it. The yeah, referee has seen enough. Huge, huge stoppage there from Byron. That was good. And, man, props to Ray. He fought his heart out. Sure did. He was, he was challenged with a really tough opponent, just physically, athletically, and even technically, too. Byron was, was throwing a lot of pop in those shots, made good decisions in the wrestling exchanges. Good fight for both guys. Yeah, big punch there. Big right hand to send him down, send Guevara down. And uh, Professor Joe Solis comes in, saw enough. Didn't want that fighter to take any more damage.
but wow, what a what power from Byron there. He showed it all throughout the fight. Early on in the first round, he carried it all the way into this round and was able to get that finish. He threw that crafty little jump knee, and I, I think that caused Ray to open up a little bit right into that Big right, right hand. Hook, yep. That's going to be the last of our regular fights tonight. The, the upcoming two fights we have are going to be title fights. The first of those two is going to be Luis Rodriguez out of the blue corner against Hayden Breyers for the 125-pound title. Solis calls for a stop to the action. 47 seconds into round number three. Declaring a winner by TKO Byron. Well 